Firstly, why is carbon so important? The first thing is that it's found in all living things. It's an element that's found in all living things. It makes up different substances in the body tissue. It's an element found in carbohydrates. All living things contain carbohydrates. An example of an important carbohydrate is glucose, which contains carbon. It's also found in protein. It's found in lipids as well. And all of these things make up the body tissue of living things. It's also found in another type of very, very important chemical called DNA. So it's found in other molecules, for example, DNA. So it's a very important element. It's found in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. So it's not carbon in the atmosphere. It's in a compound called carbon dioxide, CO2. And the final thing to remember about our carbon is that it's constantly cycled in the environment. Constantly cycled and recycled in the environment. So this is the reason why carbon is so important to living things. So we could take a look and see how the carbon is cycled in the environment. We can build up a picture step by step. So carbon dioxide is found in the atmosphere. It's about 0.04% of the atmosphere. But how does that carbon in the carbon dioxide get into living things? Well, it starts off by getting into plants. And the process is called photosynthesis photosynthesis so this is how it gets into living things into the food chain the plant will make its body tissue from the glucose that it makes from photosynthesis but animals can't do that animals can't take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and make their own body tissue so they have to get those materials that have been made by the plant so they eat plants many types of animal eat plants that's called feeding or consuming or eating so the carbon in those compounds goes into a living thing for example a rabbit and that's how the rabbit gets its materials it needs now plants and rabbits both carry out a process that puts carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere and that's called respiration very important to remember that it's not just animals that do respiration but it's plants as well all living things carry out respiration so we can just make a quick note there, respiration carried out by both animals and plants, or in plants and animals. So that's part of the cycle already. Photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide out of the air, plants and animals put carbon dioxide back into the air through respiration. However, there are other parts to the cycle. The rabbit eventually, at the end of its lifetime, if it's not eaten, will die unfortunately poor rabbit but it's not only um, animals like rabbits that will die at the end of their lifetime if they're not eaten it's also plants so plants can die but also parts of plants fall off as well for example leaves off trees they can fall off and they will die as well so we get the death of animals and the death of parts of plants or plants also, forgot to mention, the rabbit during its lifetime will produce the waste material. And that can go into the next part of the process that we're going to talk about now. So these things, the dead animals and plants and waste material, will be broken down by something called decomposers. And they will cause decay. So decomposers are things that feed off dead uh, things, dead material. Or waste material usually bacteria often bacteria and they carry out a process as well to replace carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that process is the same as in plants and animals that's respiration but remember we're talking the respiration not of the dead rabbit there we're talking respiration of the decomposers the types of living thing that feed on the dead plants and animals 
usually bacteria, but other microorganisms as well. So we get the respiration of or by decomposers, and that puts carbon dioxide back into the air as well. So our cycle is looking pretty complete there. However, there is one more part of it we need to really look at. And that is the idea of fossil fuels. Now, fossil fuels are made from dead organisms from many, many millions of years ago. Plants and animals. And I've done that as a dotted line because it's not really part of the cycle. It's not really being, fossil fuels are not being produced constantly. They take millions of years to form. But once we get these fossil fuels, this is carbon that's been locked away for a very long time. But what humans do with these fossil fuels is to burn them. They get burned in things like power stations, but not only in power stations, things like uh, vehicles, cars, trucks, also burn these fossil fuels. And that process of burning releases carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere from fossil fuels when we burn them. And that process is called combustion. That process is called combustion. So that is pretty much the carbon cycle. You could take a moment just to take a look at that because we're going to have a look at this again, but in a slightly different view. Here is the carbon cycle drawn slightly differently. The idea is to name the processes A, B, C, D and E. So have a look at this. Rewind the video if you need to, just to take another look, but see if you can name the processes in the different parts here. So part A is respiration, that's animals putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Part B is plants putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as well, so that's also respiration. And part C is coming off from dead animals and plants, so that's the decomposers carrying out respiration. And then we've got part D, which is carbon dioxide going into plants, that was photosynthesis. And then finally we've got part E, plants going into animals and that's when the animals eat the plants so we can call that feeding or consuming or eating so that's it that's our video for the carbon cycle thanks for watching and i'll see